this happens. How yeah. if I ruin it for anyone? I couldn't disagree with that attitude more. We have to get in their face. We have to stand up for our civil liberties. As Alex Jones has pointed out many times, this is like Rosa Parks refusing to get in the back of the bus. And, and this is like somebody criticizing you, a Second Amendment uh, supporter, a gun owner, criticizing you for doing this, for openly exercising your rights. If we don't push back against this, we are going to lose our rights. We've already got people who, I think many of these people who reported this were probably deathly afraid of seeing somebody with a gun because the media and the government has been calculatedly reporting this in a manner ca to cause alarm, which is what they charged you with, carrying your, your firearm in a manner to cause alarm. They're reporting about firearms in a manner to cause alarm. So we have to push back against that. We have to exercise our rights or we're going to lose them. Exactly. I mean, it's ridiculous. How can I see how someone could be, if someone's carrying a non-alarming wet manner and people call how the cops can arrest, if I see someone walking down the road with a pit bull, I don't necessarily like pit bulls, but I ain't going to call the police on them. And if I do, I doubt the cops will infringe on their liberties. That's their right to have have that kind of breed of dog. She should go the same way for a firearm. If somebody pisses their pants every time they see a gun, that's not the gun owner's problem. That's theirs. And maybe they should seek counseling. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, good luck on your uh, fight there. We hope to hear from you and find out how this is resolved. It's, it's truly amazing when we see the police and municipalities shutting down not only the First Amendment, but also the Second Amendment. And we need to understand some people don't like to see, some people who are conservatives don't like to see protesters out on the street. And some people who are protesting on the left, don't like to see people carrying firearms. We need to understand that we either get all of our freedoms recognized by the government or we'll have none of them recognized. And this is a good example of that, this particular case of yours. Exactly. Well, thank you for talking to us. Uh, good luck with your case. Derek Poe, Golden Triangle Tactical out of Beaumont, Texas. Thank you, Derek. Thank you. Well, that's exactly what they want to do. They want to try to get people afraid of guns by making it extremely rare to see anyone with a gun. They want gun owners in the closet. Well, you know what? We need to come out of the closet. We need to stand up for our constitutional rights. We need to proudly display that. And we're going to be covering this story as well as others like it at InfoWars. If you want to continue to follow the story, if you want to support the operation, get a subscription to Prison Planet TV. You can share it with up to 10 other people at the same time. It's a great way to keep abreast of what's happening, to get news that other people are not going to cover, and to inform your friends and family about these vital, important issues. If they take away the Second Amendment, they will take away the First Amendment, and they're doing both. Well, that's it for tonight. We'll be back tomorrow at 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. Tune in to PrisonPlanet.tv for an extended broadcast. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show. This is being done to acclimate the public so they don't panic when troops take over the city hall, the county, the state. This is high treason. And Obama has taken all these new powers that Bush claimed and has expanded them day one. And suddenly the left that was against it isn't saying a thing. So that's part of the preparation. Guardsmen to conduct urban training at Arcadia in April. This is going on scaled back now. It says in this article, going door to door, asking if they can search homes looking for weapons. And they practice raiding the local gun shop. And this is for domestic operations. Lieutenant Colonel, I really appreciate you coming on on such short notice, sir. My pleasure. Thanks for the invitation. You bet. Uh, I saw this uh, article out of the Daily Times Herald in Carroll, Iowa. H have you seen that? I sure have. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, it's, it's telling us about an urban warfare drill to be held in several towns. Can, can you tell us about that? Sure. Uh, it's actually a, a planned training event uh, to provide uh, our soldiers with greater proficiency at what we call cordon and search, uh, which is a mission that, um, um, just for a little background, we've deployed nearly 13,000 members of the Iowa National Guard in the global war on terror. 
and the vast majority of those have been in Iraq and Afghanistan. And one of the missions that they perform in Iraq and Afghanistan on multiple occasions is cordon and search, where basically you are trying to, to get to an area, uh, cordon it off to make sure everything's safe, and then actually search for caches of weapons or other kinds of contraband which could harm um, American forces and other Like forces. Fallujah, what we saw in Correct. Fallujah. Mm -hmm. Correct. Exactly. So because of where we're located in Iowa, there are no active duty bases in Iowa. So we kind of have to create our own urban training environments. Uh, so the, the plan on this particular training event was to actually use a small town of about 450 people. Uh, the, the town has actually kind of adopted uh, the, the unit, which is called Company A, 1st Battalion, 168th Infantry. And uh, they, were, they were more than willing to participate in the exercise. Going through this article, I mean, explaining exactly what they're going to do door to door with the houses, what the checkpoints are going to be simulating. Sure. Um, when you're talking about cordon and search operations, you've got several different rings of security that you've got to provide in a particular area. And then it's important that people are treated respectfully as you go house to house, um, as you're looking for certain items, particularly in our experience in Afghanistan and Iraq, looking for weapon caches, uh, whether those have AK 47s. Um, RPGs, rock repel grenades, that is, uh, any kind of ammunition or any kind of improvised explosive devices, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And our job uh, when we go on a cordon search is to locate those kinds of items. And then there might also be persons of interest that we're interested in that coalition forces want to talk to or apprehend. Well, let's just boil it down to this. I have video of Army and Marines with role players screaming, I'm an American, please don't put me in the camp. Uh, and the military trying to confiscate their firearms. I mean, certainly you've heard the Army Times and the new director from Secretary of Defense, Robert Gage, that they will use the National Guard under federal control uh, for civil insurrection. Are you, are you saying you're not aware of that? No, I'm certainly aware of that, absolutely. But I think you have to look at the role of the National Guard historically, is that historically um, we are used uh, in states uh, for disasters overwhelmingly. And our job is to, number one, be ready for uh, our mission uh, federally, which is to go to war. And number two is to help our fellow citizens mm -hmm. here in the United States of America. Mm -hmm. Those but the, the Army that we prepare for and train for. The Army War College three weeks ago issued a report saying they're shifting a lot of their focus to engaging the American people and directives on engagement with the American people under NORTHCOM. Well, you got to remember that the National Guard, 99% of the time, is, in, if you're talking about peacetime, belongs to the state in which they are located. Uh, only on occasion do they become federalized. One of those examples, of course, is being mobilized and deployed uh, to go to war or peacekeeping or other kinds of federalized missions. But other than that, the National Guard generally in peacetime belongs to the governor of that state. Well, you're pretty informed on all these issues. Obviously, you're right in the middle of it. Have you, did you hear about the mainstream news articles about Marines in California and other places helping at DWI checkpoints with citizens? Would that uh, violate posse comitatus? I'm, I'm not aware of that. Um, with respect to active duty military, uh, that's called Title 10 when you're on active duty, and uh, they're not allowed to participate in uh, certain kinds of operations under the Posse Comitatus Act. Does that sound like freedom to you all over the country to have the National Guard at uh, big events like at the Kentucky Derby and the Super Bowl searching bags? Well, I think if you're talking about keeping Americans safe, um, it's our job to, to do whatever we can to, to help them with that. And um, if, if our job happens to be to detect weapons of mass destruction or other kinds of things that could harm a great deal of people, um, that's what we do. Now, here's your Pentagon Channel report. The Kentucky National Guard was part of the massive security force required for this weekend's Kentucky Derby. Officials say that 360 Guard members were on hand at Churchill Downs to help support law enforcement efforts for the first leg of horse racing's Triple Crown. Now the troops took care of crowd and traffic control, provided three choppers and crews for aviation support. Officials at the track said that more than 150,000 fans turned out for the race. Police only had to make 44 arrests.